eco-friendly floaties are plastic bath toys marketed by the first years, incorporated and made famous by the work of Curtis E. Beesmere, an oceanographer who models ocean currents on the basis of flotsam movements including those of a consignment of friendly floaties, containing 29,000 plastic yellow ducks, red beavers, blue turtles and green frogs, washed into the Pacific Ocean in 1992. Some of the toys landed along Pacific Ocean shores, like Hawaii. Others traveled over 17,000 miles, floating over the side where the Titanic sank, and spent years frozen in Arctic ice to reach British and Irish shores 15 years later in 2007. Oceanography, a consignment of friendly floaty toys, manufactured in China for the first years incorporated, departed from Hong Kong on a container ship, the Ever Laurel, destined for Tacoma. Washington, U.S. on January 10, 1992, during a storm in the North Pacific Ocean close to the International Date Line, 12 40-foot intermodal containers were washed overboard. One of these containers held 28,800 floaties, a child's bath toy which came in a number of forms, red beavers, green frogs, blue turtles and yellow ducks. At some point, the container opened and the floaties were released. Although each toy was mounted in a plastic housing attached to a backing card, subsequent tests showed that the cardboard quickly degraded in seawater allowing the floaties to escape. Unlike many bath toys, friendly floaties have no holes in them so they do not take on water. Seattle oceanographers Curtis E. Beesmere and James Ingraham, who were working on an ocean surface current model, began to track their progress. The mass release of 28,800 objects into the ocean at one time offered significant advantages over the standard method of releasing 500 Euro 1,000 drift bottles. The recovery rate of objects from the Pacific Ocean is typically around 2%, so rather than the 10 to 20 recoveries typically seen with a drift bottle release, the two scientists expected numbers closer to 600. They were already tracking various other spills of flotsam including 61,000 Nike running shoes that had been lost overboard in 1990. Ten months after the incident, the first floaties began to wash up along the Alaskan coast. The first discovery consisted of ten toys found by a beach coma near Sitka, Alaska on November 16, 1992, about 2,000 miles from their starting point. Ebesmia and Ingraham contacted beach comas, coastal workers, and local residents to locate hundreds of the beached floaties over a 530 mile shoreline. Another beachcomber discovered 20 of the toys on November 28, 1992, and in total 400 were found along the eastern coast of the Gulf of Alaska in the period up to August 1993. This represented a 1.4% recovery rate. The landfalls were logged in Ingraham's computer model OSCUR which uses measurements of air pressure from 1967 onwards to calculate the direction of and speed of wind across the oceans, and the consequent surface currents. Ingraham's model was built to help fisheries but it is also used to predict flotsam movements or the likely locations of those lost at sea. Using the models they had developed, the oceanographers correctly predicted further landfalls of the toys in Washington state in 1996 and theorized that many of the remaining floaties would have traveled to Alaska, westward to Japan, back to Alaska, and then drifted northwards through the Bering Strait and become trapped in the Arctic pack ice. Moving slowly with the ice across the pole, they predicted it would take five or six years for the toys to reach the North Atlantic where the ice would thaw and release them. Between July and December 2003, the first years incorporated offered a 100 US dollars savings bond reward to anybody who recovered a floaty in New England, Canada or Iceland. More of the toys were recovered in 2004 than in any of the preceding three years. However, still more of these toys were predicted to have headed eastward past Greenland and make landfall on the southwestern shores of the United Kingdom in 2007. In July 2007, a retired teacher found a plastic duck on the Devon coast, and British newspapers mistakenly announced that the floaties had begun to arrive. But the day after breaking the story, the Western Morning News, the local Devon newspaper, reported that Dr. Simon Boxall of the National Oceanography Centre in Southampton had examined the specimen and determined that the duck was not in fact a floaty. Bleached by sun and seawater, 
the ducks and beavers had faded to white, but the turtles and frogs had kept their original colors. Legacy Eric Carle wrote a children's book Ten Little Rubber Ducks inspired by the floaties. At least one other children's book has been written about the ducks, and the toys themselves have become collector's items, fetching prices as high as $1,000. In 2004, Sandpiper published Ducky, written by Caldecott Award winner Eve Bunting and illustrated by Caldecott winner David Wisniewski. In 2011, Donovan Hon published Moby Duck, the true story of 28,800 bath toys lost at sea and of the beachcombers, oceanographers, environmentalists, and fools, including the author, who went in search of them. On June 20, 2014, the Disney Channel and Disney Junior read Lucky Duck a Canadian-American animated movie which was loosely based on and inspired by the friendly floaties. In 2013, an episode of Death in Paradise called A Stormy Occurrence featured a murder victim who intended to drop a rubber duck into the ocean. He punctuated it with the phrase, One more for Curtis. See also, Drifter, Great Pacific Garbage Patch, Marine Debris, Message in a Bottle. Footnotes External links Keith C. Hydorn, of Shoes and Ships and Rubber Ducks and a Message in a Bottle, The Weather Doctor. Jane Stanley, Ducks Odyssey Near's End, BBC News. Duck Ahoy, The Age, Marsha Walton, How Nikes, Toys and Hockey Gear Help Ocean Science, CNN.com. Journey of the Floaties, Spiegel Magazine, Timeline of Rubber Duck Voyage, Rubaduck.com, Donovan Hon, Moby Duck, or the Synthetic Wilderness of Childhood, Harper's Magazine, January, pages 39 a Euro 62. Moby Duck, the true story of 28,800 bath toys lost at sea and of the beachcombers, oceanographers, environmentalists, and fools, including the author, who went in search of them a Euro follow-up non-fiction book based on two years' research after the Harper's Magazine article.